There's only one difference between a crazy man and me. The crazy man thinks he's sane. I know I'm crazy. Salvador Dali. Hello and welcome to part two of Universidad Francisco Marroquín's Discover Don Quixote de la Mancha. If you liked part one, you are going to love part two. More action, more sex, more danger, more confusion, better art, and a better program all around. So welcome and thanks for joining us again. Although it was published in 1615, a full 10 years after part one, the second part of Don Quixote is clearly a continuation of the first, sharing most of its themes, symbols, and characters. Madness, desire, violence, and religion are again key issues, and the novel is still structured according to a basic conflict between chivalric fantasy and everyday realism. The symbolisms of asses and inns also carry over from part one. Similarly, the priest, the barber, the housekeeper, and the niece are all present early on, and even Ginés de Pasamonte makes another cameo appearance. But there are major differences. The second part sounds more natural than the first, more intimate, more immediate, as if Cervantes' method of writing had become more spontaneous. Furthermore, its tone is darker. For Don Quixote, instead of a buffoon and a general menace, becomes a more tragic and human figure. Did you know the success of the first part of Don Quixote prompted Avellaneda to write a spurious continuation? And it's Avellaneda's continuation that prompts Cervantes to finally finish the second part of the novel, 10 years after part one. At the same time, part two contains even more innovative, almost postmodern textual moments, which constantly break traditional narrative boundaries, such as when Sancho questions the veracity of a vision that his master has while in the cave of Montesinos, or when the knight attacks a puppet show that other characters are enjoying, or when Don Quixote and Sancho learn that they are characters in a novel. Also, Don Quixote and Sancho often switch roles in part two, with our Hidalgo starting to accept reality and our peasant insisting on fantastical interpretations of the same phenomena. Another difference is that instead of heading south into the Sierra Morena, the pair head east toward Zaragoza and Barcelona. And there are important new characters such as the Duke and Duchess and Sanson Carrasco who play major roles and interact with knight and squire in ways not seen in part one because they aggressively participate in chivalric fantasies that they themselves construct around our hero. In the second part, where are Don Quixote and Sancho headed? A. Sierra Morena B. Zaragoza C. Malaga Correct answer, B, Zaragoza. As another example, we will meet three different Dulcineas in part two, all of them making radical gestures toward Don Quixote and requesting that he perform specific actions. Finally, part two of Don Quixote is a more overtly political novel than part one. Indeed, chapter one announces this theme at the outset. In the very first words of part two, Cervantes acknowledges the original Moorish author, according to Cide Amete Berengeli, in the second part of this history. This not only links part two to the end of part one, where the narrator alluded to a third adventure, it turns part one's anxieties about the looming expulsion of the Moriscos into bitter reflections on the fact that the policy was actually carried out during the five years prior to the publication of part two. Cervantes then employs the accepted medical discourse of the era when he informs us that Don Quixote has been convalescing, but that his heart and his head are still problems. In other words, the interconnected sources of his emotional and intellectual temperaments are still out of balance. It is not difficult to read Don Quixote's altered state as a metaphor for the Morisco policy. That's all for now. We invite you to enroll in the course by going to donquixote.ufm.edu. Remember to read the text, watch the videos, participate in the online discussion forum, and participate in our online live sessions. Also, enroll in our YouTube channel by going to YouTube and typing Don Quixote UFM. We'll see you in our next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, 
you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.